Hello and welcome to uh, Scout Israel, welcome to my new vlog. Uh, this vlog is going to be out for Israel's new Prime Minister, Naftali Bennett. <laughs> about uh, uh, eight months ago, we had an election that was our, our fourth in, in two years. Uh, and in that election, uh, the largest party was the Likud party, but the second largest party was the Yeshatid party. Uh, last night, a coalition was formed of uh, a lot of disparate blocks going from uh, Naftali Bennett, so led, led by Naftali Bennett and his Yamina party. The surprise is he's actually only got six, six seats in the Knesset. Um, should be explained why this uh, have to, you have to do these coalition business is because it's a proportional representation system meaning uh, uh, as near as can be uh, the proportion of seats in the Knesset in the Israeli parliament fits the mirrors the mirrors the number of votes uh, acquired so it also relies on coalitions the winning coalition was led by Naftali Bennett and his Yamina party uh, also, Yesha Tid, the second largest block, uh, the second largest party, and the Blue and White Party, the Ram Party, which uh, is uh, Arab, uh, the the left wing party of Meretz, and that's uh, what we're talking about. Is how come Natalie Bennett got to be prime minister? As always, this is your special pause to hit like, hit share, and hit subscribe. How come it happened? Well. Uh, most people take that question to mean, how come it happened? It must be to do with the Palestinian situation. A bit. Not really, but a bit. Uh, most people say, how come it happened? How come Lapid and Bennett made a uh, alliance? Actually, that is about as shocking as my socks. So let's have a look at my socks, see how shocking they are. Nope, not shocking socks day, not wearing like nude women on my socks or anything. So no, no, not shocking. Uh, Bennett and Lapid making a pact is not shocking. They're both a fairly standard uh, politicians being a little bit ideological and a little bit not ideological, a little bit interested on power. So when many people ask why, how come an extreme rightist made an alliance with somebody on the centre, uh, the first thing you can say, uh, not surprising, they both want to be Prime Minister so they can put their ideolo ideology into practice. Uh, secondly, Bennett is not that right wing. I know what you're saying. You say, oh come on, he was head of the Yesha Council, the head of the organisation representing settlers. One thing we, we, we really need to dispel is this whole extremist language. Extremist right, extremist left. Look at Natalie Bennett. Isn't he an extremist? Is extreme, extreme right? It doesn't describe anything. Harness would extra explain something, meaning following the uh, the the writings of Rabbi Meir Kahana. Um, but but extremist right, extremist left doesn't help. Uh, Bennett is on the right, but calling him an extremist is not going to explain to you who he really is. So let's drop that one, because a lot of the news agencies are like, the the extreme, um, massively extreme settler right party of Yamina has formed an alliance with the, the far, far left of uh, Meretz. They have Meretz is not on the far, far left. There's actually still Zionists as well, and still kind of within the system of the far, far left. It's like Che Guevara. That doesn't make any sense. He hasn't. It's like, uh, you know, there's been an alliance between uh, Ayn Rand and Che Guevara. That hasn't happened. But here, you have to understand, extreme right, that is a sliding term, because we have what's known as Kahanists, meaning, um, people who believe in a, creating a uh, kind of theocratic state and throwing out uh, anybody who's not Jewish uh, and doing also nowadays they're a bit more intelligent they say, they say we're throwing out anybody who's not Jewish as they say uh, we're giving people the option of leaving and we believe in land transfer oops 
slip of the tongue. Did I say land transfer? I really meant population transfer. Kind of a big difference there. The one thing actually Kahanis don't want is land transfer. The one thing they absolutely uh, do want is population transfer. Big difference. Whoops. Sorry. Misspoke. Uh, by the way, very rarely does land transfer really exist without any coercion there. And um, Ben, it's not really that. He's quite, he believes in settlement, but he never has spoken about transferring people out. He certainly has spoken about giving people the opportunity of becoming Israeli citizens in the occupied territories or in Judea and Samaria, whatever you want to call it. I really don't care. Um, he, he he does talk about that. So he's kind of your kind of mainstream settler, if you can call him that. Uh, and his his main focus is, is on power. Yes, is on putting his uh, his agenda into play, which means having having a government. And you can't have a government without coalitions, and you can't do that with making uh, agreements with people you don't like very much. Uh, also, in Israel, we haven't had. A proper government for more than two years and which means we haven't had a budget for more than two years which is really damaging for the country and the shock isn't Lapid uh, Lapid wants power he wants power the shock is Ram Ram the uh, United Arab list religious Zionists many of them would consider themselves to be democrat and liberal and that would mean that all people within Israel have the right to be represented and the right to represent people in the uh, framework of the Israeli legislature, the Knesset. And that means very simply that there is no problem with an Arab forming a political party. There is no problem with an Arab or a Muslim representing people or being in government the uh, where this red line is normally drawn amongst many religious zionists is that uh, they would say that uh, muslims or arabs don't have the right to self-determination as a group outside of the israeli uh, national grouping uh, and therefore groups like the ram party who work within the system they don't really have a problem with them being in government and all of this nonsense about ultra nationalist this and extremist that doesn't really come into play there are records of naftali bennett saying words to that effect so i would put that as being at least the ideological reason why this can all happen uh, also as we said bennett bennett wants power so Bennett's going to form an alliance with uh, even the Arabists. And also a further thing, uh, who, who was it who did this first? That's right, that would be Netanyahu. Now, also, very, very important, not a lot of people are doing this, you've got to ask, who are Ram? Who, who is this, uh, this supposedly Islamist party? I keep getting it wrong, we're calling them Arabist or something silly. But who are the... Islamist party a very very simply they're a democratic party built on principles of uh, forwarding certain Islamic values uh, and uh, certain values which uh, promote the well-being of Arab groups within Israeli society as part of the uh, Islamic movement uh, they had a big, big split in the 1996 election where uh, those who decided they were going to participate in the election and also support things like a two-state solution uh, broke off from the, part, from the main party of the Islamic movement. Uh, the northern branch stayed in really within the bounds of the movement and being uh, anti uh, cooperation with the Israeli state, anti anything to do with the Zionist entity, what's known as anti normalization. The southern branch, which is the branch that we're dealing with now, uh, which is the Ram Party, they participated in the state and believe in its two state solution and therefore, to some extent, at least believe not 
in the destruction of Zionism, therefore not in the destruction of Israel, and do not support terrorism. The northern branch of the movement has actually been outlawed because it supports terrorism. The southern branch, which is the branch which, the, which Ram is, or Ram is part of, do not support terrorism and have engaged in uh, uh, normalization with the Zionist entity, meaning with Israel. Um, therefore, when people accuse Bennett of sitting down with uh, people who would snuggle up to terrorists, this is not true. Oh yes, final thing to dismiss the argument that Bennett lied! He, he said he wasn't going to join with the Arab parties and then he did. I honestly don't know what to say about that. Yes, but I've got some news for you. Politicians, they lie to us. Even the politicians you like. So did Netanyahu, so did everybody. Nobody, I think he, he is making a uh, a wager there that the people who voted for him want him to be uh, prime minister more than they want him to keep that particular promise and that his agenda is more important than uh, any of this uh, backstory about whether he promised x y or z his agenda more important him taking power he needs to do that to fulfill his agenda and, uh, and then we'll find out whether that's true. Um, a joke to put this all into context. How can you tell when a politician is lying? Their lips are moving. Remember to hit like, share and subscribe. And if you want to give a bit extra because I'm still a tour guide without work, please remember you can visit Patreon or Ko-Fi, uh, patreon.com, ko-fi.com, both of them slash Scout Israel. Uh, thank you very much.